Makers! Today we're going to be stitching a laptop bag. This has been a highly requested tutorial. It's a very popular bag style for students, professionals, and creatives. So I hope you're excited to learn how to make this functional bag. So for today's tutorial, we're going to be stitching a brand new pattern that I designed named the Morning Post. I'm someone who commutes a lot with my laptop. I take it to events and trade shows. I'm constantly lugging it around. So I wanted to make sure to design a laptop bag that was comfortable to carry and durable. On the exterior of the bag, there are two concealed zipper pockets, which are very convenient for cords, keys, other items that you want to access quickly, but then they're still semi hidden by the covered zipper pocket. The entire bag is padded with a foam interfacing and then there's also the option to add a soft lining fabric on the inside of the bag to protect your laptop from bumps and scrapes so you can use Cuddle Minky, Sherpa, Fleece, any soft fabric that you'd like. I also recommend using webbing for the adjustable crossbody strap. It's another way to customize your bag and it also allows for a really comfortable fit and we just launched our first collection of webbing. So go and have a look on our website to see the whole variety that's available. So before we get started, go ahead and grab the morning post pattern. It contains the templates that you need to make this project and also has a list of pieces to cut from your fabrics. You can either download the pattern from our website or head on over to your local fabric shop to see if they stock it. On the back of the pattern cover, there's a list of all the supplies and the materials that you'll need for this project. So go grab your pattern and your supplies, get all the pieces that you need cut out, and let's begin. As always, the first step in the pattern is to cut out all of your pieces. And I always recommend to review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. You'll want to make sure that you're selecting fabrics that will work well with the design and construction of this project. So for my main fabric, I chose a canvas. The main fabric will be used for all of the exterior pieces. For lining fabric A, you have the option to add a soft lined interior. So you could choose a soft material such as minky or terry cloth, something that won't scratch your electronics inside. However, cotton or canvas will work too. And that is what I selected for my main fabric A. I'm using the exact same cotton for lining fabric A. Lining fabric B will be used for the interior zipper gusset, the lower gusset, the bias binding inside, the pocket lining and pocket facing. So that's up to you to decide if you want to use the same lining fabric for both A and B, or if you rather have a soft lining on the larger interior panels. You'll also need some interfacing, this will stabilize the exterior to give it a little bit more structure. I recommend a lightweight woven fusible interfacing. You'll need some foam interfacing. What's nice about the foam is it adds that structure that we want, but then it also has a nice soft padding for your electronics. And another material that you'll need is webbing. You can choose to use one inch webbing for all of the pieces or you could use one inch webbing for the handles and then choose to add one and a half inch webbing for the strap connectors and the adjustable strap. So if you want a wider strap over your shoulder, you can certainly do so. Plus we have a full collection of new webbing designs. There are a variety of prints and weaves to choose from with lots of colors and patterns. I'm just using a neutral webbing for my project. So once you have all of your pieces cut out, it might be helpful to label them. So you can do so by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side of your fabric with a removable pen or chalk, or you could also download and print the free piece label sheet on our website. So each label has either piece A, B, C, and you can clip them onto your fabric pieces for as many pieces that you need and reuse them for other projects. So let's get started on fusing the interfacing to the coordinating pieces. I've already went ahead and completed this step, but you'll want to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the interfacing that you chose 
and center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of your coordinating main fabric pieces. A, for your exterior top, B, exterior bottom, D, zipper gusset, E, lower gusset, and also your lining pieces I for the pocket facing. Next, we'll attach the handles. With right sides up, position the outer edges of one webbing handle, piece J, according to the pattern, on each main fabric piece A exterior top. You wanna make sure that the raw edges of the handle are even with the bottom raw edge of the exterior top. You can use sewing clips or some double-sided basting tape to hold the layers together. Then over at the machine, we'll top stitch the handle ends an eighth inch from the sides, starting at the raw edge and sewing across. Then we'll sew up from the bottom and stop according to the pattern. So across the handle and back down to the raw edge. And then repeat to attach the remaining handle to the remaining exterior top panel. Make sure that your handle isn't twisted. You'll want to refer to the pattern for stitch length and seam allowance throughout the entire project. Also, if you're a beginner, you might want to coordinate your thread to match your webbing or your fabrics, and that will give you a little bit of flexibility when it comes to the final top stitching that will be seen on the outside of the bag. And it's always a good idea to backstitch. Next, we'll create the zipper pockets. Start by taking one main fabric piece B for your exterior bottom and one lining piece I for your pocket facing. And center the pocket facing right sides together with the exterior bottom, aligning the top edges. You can use pins to hold the layers together. I'm just going to add a couple clips at the top. Then we're gonna sew the two pieces together along the indented section of the pocket facing with a quarter inch seam allowance. I recommend to reduce your stitch length to 1.5 or two millimeters long, especially at the corners for a secure seam and a flatter finish once we move on to the next step. After sewing, trim your seam allowance to an eighth inch wide and also snip the inner corners of the seam allowance. Just be careful that you do not cut through the stitches. This will help the facing lay flat and smooth. Then we'll turn and press the facing so the exterior and facing are wrong sides together. Next, you'll take one of your 14 inch single slide zippers. I'm using Sally Tomato Zipper by The Yard they have a nylon coil with a metallic finish, so as you can see, they look super professional. They appear to be metal, but they're actually nylon. So we will be able to cut and sew through this zipper coil, which is what we need for this project. So I highly recommend trying out our zippers if you haven't already. Position your lining piece H pocket lining right side up and the zipper right side up and you'll want to position the zipper closed either with the pull on the right, if you're right-handed, or if you're left-handed, you'll want the zipper to be closed with the pull on the left. So position your zipper so it is oriented in the correct direction. Then you're going to align the top edge of the zipper with the top edge of your pocket lining. You can use pins or sewing clips to hold the layers together. Then over at the sewing machine, we'll sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. I have the very narrow foot attached to my sewing machine. I'm sewing on a baby lock accomplish. If you don't have this type of foot, or perhaps your brand doesn't make this type of foot, or perhaps the sewing machine brand that you have does not offer this type of foot, I would definitely recommend using a zipper foot for this section of instructions. After sewing, press the pocket lining away from the zipper. Then position your pocket lining wrong side up and the zipper should be right side up at the top. Center your exterior bottom with the facing attached right side up over the pocket lining and align the top fabric and zipper tape edges. You'll want to move the zipper pull inside the indented section if it isn't already either pin or clip in place, and then we'll top stitch along the indented edge with an eighth inch seam allowance.
Next, with right sides together, fold the pocket lining up to align to the top and side edges. You might want to flip your piece over to the wrong side to see a little bit better to align the edges. You'll want to pin only the layers of the pocket lining together. Then sew piece H, which is your pocket lining, in place along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at the indent. Next, move the right side of the exterior bottom out of the way. Sew the pocket lining together along the right side with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then we'll repeat for the left side. Then you'll repeat this entire process for your remaining exterior bottom, pocket lining, zipper, and facing. Now we're ready to assemble the exterior. With wrong sides together, press each of your main fabric piece C zipper cover in half lengthwise. I'm just gonna demonstrate one side of the bag, but you repeat these same steps for the opposite side of the bag. Next, with right sides up, align the long raw edges of one zipper cover along the top edge of each exterior bottom panel. Make sure that the sides are even. Then top stitch the zipper cover an eighth inch from the sides and top edge. Next, with right sides together, align the bottom edge of one exterior top with the top edge of each exterior bottom. Sew together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. After sewing, press the seam towards the top and top stitch the top panel either an eighth inch or a quarter inch from the seam. I personally like the quarter inch wide seam because it gets a little thick over the webbing handles. Just take your time and sew slowly for an even top stitch. After that, now is the time to add an optional handmade label. So if you'd like to install that, you'll refer to the pattern for the placement and also check out our YouTube channel for a step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to install this hardware. Next, we'll attach the foam to the coordinating pieces. With right sides up, align all edges of each assembled exterior panel over one foam piece F. Use sewing clips or basting spray to hold the layers together. Make sure that that pocket lining stays smooth and flat. Then baste an eighth inch from each of the outer edges. You'll repeat the same process to attach the other assembled exterior panel to the foam, and then you'll also attach your main fabric pieces D and E to coordinating foam pieces D and E. Next, top stitch a three quarter inch high box with an X in the center below the top stitching across each of the handles to further secure the layers to the foam. Once that is done, you'll take one lining piece F and position the wrong side against each of the attached foam piece F opposite of the main fabric. Then you'll baste the layers together an eighth inch from the outer edges, moving the handles out of the way as you sew. Next, we're ready to attach the strap connectors. You can choose to either add D-rings or triangle rings. What's nice about the triangle rings is that they have a narrow area which prevents your strap connector from bunching in the corners. Then at the top, they have a circular opening which you can clip your swivel hook to. However, the classic D-ring shape works just the same as well. Your swivel hook will slide across the arch and the flat side of the hardware helps prevent your strap connector from bunching. I'm going to stick with the classic D-rings for my project. Simply slide one D-ring over the end of each webbing piece K for your strap connectors and fold the raw ends of each connector so they meet in the middle, which will be the underside. You'll want the flat side of the D-ring to be encased by the top folded edge. Then pin the raw ends in place. Next, with right sides up, position the top of one connector according to the pattern on your main fabric piece E lower gusset. You can use pins or basting tape to hold each of the connectors in place. Make sure that you have a zipper foot or narrow foot attached to your sewing machine and you'll start by top stitching each connector along the hardware, then pivot to sew an eighth inch from remaining edges and also stitch an X through the center of the box for reinforcement. There's gonna be a lot of weight inside this bag once you add your laptop, your tablet, 
planner, and other accessories. Now we're ready to assemble the gusset. With right sides together, position a 24 inch or longer zipper along the long edge of one main fabric piece D for your zipper gusset. You'll want to let the zipper pull and the ends of the zipper extend beyond the sides. The longer zipper will make it easier to install because we won't have to worry about moving the zipper pull out of the way as we sew. So make sure that the zipper pull is closed with the pull on one end. Next, with right sides together, layer one lining piece D for your zipper gusset over the main fabric piece D, and it should be against the wrong side of the zipper. Sew the layers together along the long edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Fold the zipper gusset pieces away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together. I like to top stitch the long raw edges first, then an eighth inch from the short side edges and a quarter inch from the seam. By top stitching the raw edges first, it helps make sure that the pieces stay even and aligned. Then you'll repeat the same steps to attach the remaining zipper gusset pieces to the opposite edge of the zipper. After sewing, move the zipper pull towards the inside and trim off the excess zipper tape. You'll want to make sure that the height of the prepared zipper gusset measures the same as piece E for your lower gusset, and you can trim to adjust if necessary. It's all dependent on what type of zipper that you used, whether or not they will measure the same. Next, with main fabrics right sides together, align one short edge of the zipper gusset with one short edge of the main fabric piece E lower gusset. Then with lining fabrics right sides together, align that same short edge of the zipper gusset with lining piece E lower gusset. Sew the aligned short edges together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Next, fold the lower gusset pieces away from the zipper gusset so they are wrong sides together and press. Then top stitch the lower gusset a quarter inch from the seam. Now watch how I do this because we're repeating the same steps as before, matching the main fabrics right sides together and lining fabrics right sides together to attach the opposite short edges together. It will definitely look a little strange, but as long as you keep right sides together, make sure nothing is twisted, your piece will turn out just fine. After attaching the opposite edges, I do recommend to align the lower gusset pieces and top stitch or baste an eighth inch from each of the long edges to keep those layers secure. Then fold the assembled gusset in half, matching the seams to mark the top and bottom center on both the front and the back of the gusset. The next step is to shape the exterior and interior corners. Position the template included with the pattern in each corner of the prepared exterior interior piece. You'll trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge in all four corners. Then cut along the marked lines to round each corner. You'll repeat for the remaining exterior interior piece. In the next section of instructions, you'll prepare the bias binding. Refer to the pattern or our YouTube channel for a tutorial on how to prepare bias binding. You'll cut the strips into two and a quarter inches wide. You can also reference the pattern for illustrations and step-by-step -step instructions. After you've prepared your binding strip, you can set that aside. Next, we'll assemble the bag. Fold each of your exterior interior pieces in half matching the short side edges to mark the top and bottom center. Next, with main fabrics together, match the center marks on the gusset with the center marks on one exterior interior piece. You wanna make sure that the zipper gusset is aligned along the top. Use lots of sewing clips to hold the layers together. If you're having a difficult time getting the gusset to lay flat along the curves, you can cut eighth inch snips around the curves to help ease the gusset in place. 
When you're ready, head on over to the sewing machine and sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. If you'd like, you can use a stiletto or a Sally Tomato Essential tool to help guide the fabric around the curves. Make sure to stop with your needle down to readjust as needed. The next step is to attach the binding to the edge that we just had sewn together. Again, I encourage you to visit our YouTube channel for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to add binding to the raw edges. Otherwise, feel free to follow along with the pattern and the illustrations. Then you'll repeat the same process to attach the remaining half of the bag to the opposite side of the gusset. And the last section of the instructions includes how to make an adjustable strap. You can follow along with the pattern or visit our YouTube channel for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create an adjustable strap out of webbing. For more adjustable strap options, I encourage you to check out our Make a Strap pattern. There are a variety of adjustable strap options so you can really customize your bag. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and will get lots and lots of use out of this bag. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions about the pattern or tutorial. And as always, I would love to hear your honest feedback about the pattern design, the construction, and the tutorial as well. Also, please share and show off photos of your completed project. You should be so proud and we would love to see your finished bag. So use the hashtags Sally Tomato and hashtag The Morning Post on social media so we can see your bag and share it too. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that way you don't miss out on any future tutorials. I hope you check out the rest of our pattern line for more inspiring and professional projects, and I will see you next time.